message for today is courage for winning. Courage for winning. I'm seeing uh, work like a national rulers too. Amen. God bless you. <laughs> Amen. Let me see if any you know he's an African man. God bless all of you, man. Work like a. You've invited chiefs for this service. You're all welcome. God bless you. Courage for winning. Without courage, you can't win in life. All promises of God minus courage equals failure. In Joshua chapter 1 and verse 4 and verse 5. Now hear this. Please look at the scripture carefully. God speaking to the man Joshua said, From the wilderness and this Lebanon even unto the great river, river Hephrates, all the land of the Hittites and all the great sea towards the going down of the sun shall be your coast. <laughs> there shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so I'll be with thee. I will not fail thee nor forsake thee. Now, if God give you this kind of promise, won't you sleep? You sleep. God tell you I'll give you everything. But look at verse 6. The A path. He said, I've given you be strong and of a good work. He said, this I can't do for you. Verse 7. Verse 7. Only be that strong and very what? Courageous. Verse 9. <laughs> Have I not commanded thee? Verse 9, please. Have I not commanded thee? Be strong and of a what? Jesus, sorry, Joshua was giving wonderful promises in verses 4 and what? Five, but God never left him with the euphoria of just boxing in the promises as some do. Oh, God has told me this year I'm going to be a multi billionaire God has told me this year things will happen. He had his own part to play. He had his own part to work. God has promised his word, but you have, a part, you have your part to play. And that is you have to be courageous. There is no promise of God that can be actualized without courage. What is courage? Courage is standing with total confidence and conviction that God's word will come through in your favor irrespective of prevailing circumstances. It is doing what must be done in spite of raging fears. That's courage. You had this and you well, Courage is not the absence of fear, but the conquest of fear. Something wants to bring fear, but you face it and clear it. I pray today, I decree that thing that wants to threaten you, bring it down. Yes. In the name of Jesus. In Psalm 27, 1 to 3, 13 and 14. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies and my foe came upon me to eat my, up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. And everyone who planning evil against me will fall right now. <laughs> Though and host should encamp against me. My heart shall not fear. So fear is of where? The heart. The war should rise up against me. In this will I be confident. 13 and 14. I have fainted unless I have believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. 14. Wait on the Lord. Be of good work. And it shall strengthen the heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. I declare that thing threatening you. We go down in the name of Jesus. Amen. You will not emerge a winner until courage is in place. It takes courage to grow up and become who God wants you to be and what you are supposed to be. 
You are the spirit of God. Courage is the ability to stand up for what is right in the face of intimidation without changing your position or compromising. Courage keeps you going when others are retreating. Now here is a typical example in the Bible. It's David and Goliath. Many people talk about David. David was not the only covenant child. And there was no way it was prophesied that David would be Goliath. No way in the Bible. David had covenant brothers who were at the war front even before David went there. The only difference between David and them was a heart. Every one of them was fidgeting. Only David had a heart. So without a heart, he can't make a mark on the earth. David said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Now hear this. David had the same covenant with his brothers. They had the same God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel. But one thing David had that they never had was courage. David was fearless. They were fearful. So even when David came, they said, what are you coming here to do, small boy? David said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? The God I serve will bring him down. I pray something others are afraid of. You will take over and make mark in the name of Jesus. Those who have lion's heart, enjoy lion's share. If you look at the lion, what makes the lion lion is not his size. Listen carefully, people of God. Lion is not bigger than cow in size. How come they call him the king of the jungle? Elephant is very big, yet he's not the king of the jungle. How do you call lion that is like this, the king of the jungle? You know why? The heart. When the lion stands, he sees every other animal as meat, including the, the, the elephant. So when he's moving, he moves majestically, saying, I'm in charge here. So it is not, courage has nothing to do with your status, it has to do with your heart. You can be a weightlifter and be fearful, you can be tiny and be very courageous. I've seen slim people who dear things that fat people who have height can dear. Today, may you be baptized with the spirit of courage. Amen. Courage is standing, taking a stand when no one else will. Yeah, these people of God, life shrinks or expands in proportion to one's courage. Nothing will bring you down anymore. There was a man called Franklin D. Roosevelt. This man had polio. So he was using walking aid and sometimes he was on a wheelchair at the time. Yeah, in Israel, he has been the longest serving president of America. Nobody has ever served like Franklin D. Roosevelt today. He made a statement. He said, the only limit to our realization of tomorrow is our doubts of today. Unquote. This man, he would have given excuses being on a wheelchair. He is the only one that ruled America four times. Nobody in the history of America has done that. Stop the doubt. Rise with courage and you will win. Say amen to that. Amen. He had every excuse to remain a failure in life. But he faced his fears with courage. And today he's still being celebrated in America. Are you getting what I'm talking about? Without courage, nobody will celebrate you. Nobody what? <laughs> Are you getting what I'm talking about? Courage is not the absence of fear, but conquering what would have brought fear to you. That's what I mean. Now listen carefully. 2003. It took courage. For, when you hear this, it's simple now. 2003, when we had our first crusade. Before that crusade, nobody in Port Harcourt has ever done any big program without another face. Those of you who have been in this town for some years, we know. If you want to do a program in this town, you must take another great man of God, put his face, and then put you, the pastor of Paracord, by his side. So that man of God will be the major showcase Then you will now support. And God said to me, move the church and do a program. I heard God. My wife even saw it. He said, my husband, 
I saw you doing program outside. We were doing program outside. And the whole place was filled. I said, I know God spoke to me. He's only using it to confirm it. But God spoke. I had to have courage. Because church was not even that full. You are not taking program to civic center. As at that time. <laughs> so when I put the poster of civic center, people said, hey, this man is a madman. He's a madman. Without any preacher. Without the, I won't call the names. The names you know who are who is who. Some are going to be with the Lord. He said, without these people, this young boy think that they can come and do program. Let us see. A man of God said, they held a meeting and said, let them watch. Let us see how we feel civic center. Since my, I like this kind of big thing that's bigger than me. Until you do what is bigger than you, God will never back you. But from the first day, those of you are old members, from the first day, civic center was jammed. By the second day, overflow, no space. Say courage. Say courage. Yes, God has spoken. But you know why you have not moved? Fear. What is it? That's what he said to Joshua. I have given you, but one thing I will not do for you, be strong out of a good courage. He told you, travel out to do business. I will like travel. I'm from Okurama. Okuru. Okurama. I'm from Okurama, Port Harcourt. Where the women tie Okuru? <laughs> <laughs> How can I go to... What are you talking about? Do you know my background? You don't know. You are telling me. I teach in community secondary school. Hmm. This vision of going overseas is for other people, not me. God will be looking at you. But you are praying, oh God, bless me. Oh God, make me an international figure. God said international figure in Okurama. <laughs> step out with courage. Step out with what? Courage. Until you step out of the boat, you will never walk on water. Those who are afraid and sit in the boat will never walk on water. I see you walk on water. Yeah. Shout a better amen. Shout a living amen. amen. Shout a believing amen. amen. Requirements to live a courageous life. What are the requirements to live a courageous life? What are, because courage, <laughs> you need to cultivate it. Is that true? What are requirements? Yeah, you, many of us, so many things God has told us, we can't achieve them. Lack of what? Courage. So what are the requirements? To live a courageous life. Number one, knowledge of God's word. Knowledge of what? God's word. In Daniel chapter 11 verse 32. Those who do know their God, they shall be strong and do as well. But the people that do know what? Their God. The be path. A wise man is strong. Yea, a man of knowledge. Proverbs 24 verse 5. Increase it strength. It is your knowledge of God that makes you to be courageous. You can't have the word and not be courageous. So I hear. The deadliest weapon Satan's agents can use against a believer is ignorance. Is what? Cultivate God's word in your heart as to be courageous. As to be what? Sit down with the word. Sit down with the what? With the word. And courage will be built. And courage what? Now listen. There's no project that intimidates me. You know why? If you don't have courage, there are projects that God will ask you to do. You will faint. It's knowledge. It's what? I don't panic. Money has never been an issue because I saw from God's word. I will build. Whether spiritual building, physical building, not me. He will build. So... If he will build, then something must come from him. So when he said, take on this project, I don't think twice. Because I am not the one to build. The builder is him. And the heaven and earth is his own. So provision will come from him, not from me. Hello. So when he said, go ahead, I just step out. I don't have fear. Where will money come from? No, I'm not the one. The owner will build it. But if I don't have knowledge, 
I'll be afraid. I'll be what? I'll be afraid. So build your knowledge bank to have courage. Say so here. Number two requirement. Have confidence in God and his word. Have what? Have confidence in God and his word. Stand on the integrity of God's word. In Numbers 23 verse 19. God is not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he should repent. Had he said, and shall he not do it? And had he spoken, and shall he not make it good? Your confidence is that God, you said so. Because you said so, I don't doubt that it will happen. Are you getting upset now? Forever, O oh Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. Psalm 119 verse 89. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. Matthew 24, 35. The knowledge of God's word guarantees confidence. Can this is what? Confidence. Let me show you a typical example in the Bible of how courage is built. From three young men called Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. In Daniel chapter 3, 16 to 18, 29, 28 to 29. 16 to 18, 28 to 9. Now look at this. There, you can see how confidence in God matters. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. If it be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning fairy furnace, and he will, did you see confidence? And he will what? See confidence. See what? Out of the hand, O king. They said, we are our confidence is so strong that God will deliver us. We don't care the nonsense decree you put. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. So here. We have fixed program before, and a national program was fixed after we have fixed our program. Life story. The old members tell you. And they said I should cancel the program because they fixed the program that morning. <laughs> I said, since we have fixed it, that program must stand. I said, God cannot fix the program and then they fix the national program. I said, the national program will bow to God because God is first. And we came out first. Everybody was shaking. They said, sir, it's the national program. They said, that morning, nobody should come out. I said, fix it. That morning we meet. 7 a.m. They said, no, I should cancel it. I stood my ground and we held the program that year. It was after us, the national program then started. But if I don't have courage, I said, what if they bring police? <laughs> An army to stop us. <laughs> so here. I pray today, God will baptize you with a fresh oil. Amen. So here. Then Nebuchadnezzar, pull up, see, see, verse 28. Then Nebuchadnezzar spake and said, Blessed be the God of Shedah, Mishael, what? Who has set his angels and delivered his servants that trusted. Did you hear that, that word? Where did I stop? That trusted in him and have changed the king's word and yielded their bodies that they might not serve nor worship any god except their own god. Therefore, I make a decree. Your, your stand with God will make them change their stories. <laughs> He said, therefore, I make what? A decree. That every people, nation, and language will speak anything amiss against the God of Shedam and Abednego shall be cut in pieces and their houses shall be made a dunghill because there is no other God that can deliver after this sort. After this day, people shall recognize your God. I say, after today, they will recognize your God. Because when you have confidence in God, you do the impossible and you do something that naturally your others will not do. You will dare the incredible to do the impossible. May someone go with that kind of spirit after now. Amen. Number three requirement, righteousness, consciousness. Righteousness what? Consciousness. This thing will make you, righteousness will make you. Proverbs 28 verse 1, the wicked flee where no man pursueth. But the righteous are bold as a lion. When you live in righteousness consciousness, 
you become very bold and courageous. You become very bold and what? Courageous. Second Corinthians 5 to the 1. For he had made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. God made us righteous by the finished work of our Lord Jesus Christ. Without understanding, be bold and courageous. That when we are small, God cannot be your father and you live like a fugitive. Now, if, if you have ever been a bit funny, like you like to crack children, knock children on the head, and you play rough when you are small, if somehow if you're a boy, it's only girls that don't know to play rough, but boys, every boy play rough small. Even if your parents were a jabota, you still play rough. It takes more sand, point your head, and do like this. <laughs> and if, the, if you go to play, because in those days, they were, toys were not like that. The toy is hitting each other. You know, right now you buy a toy, you say you have computer. No computer. The toy of that time is your boy, I, I hit you. That's our toy. I mean, which toy? Highest was bicycle. Like your, one person will use, give to your brother. A lot of you will use the bicycle. That was a but toy. The toy was rough play. Now, when you play roughly and then somebody threatens you, it's over, I will show you pepper. The person said, okay, if, you, if they're born, you come. When you, when you go towards your father and stand at the back of your father, what do you do? You say, if they're born, you come here. <laughs> Why did you do so? You saw your father standing. Is that true? That's how courage is. When you know who is backing you, you don't panic. You know God is the one backing you. So you can say to the devil, you can't stop me. I pray today. No force will stop you. Yeah. Number four. Be conscious of his ever abiding presence. Be what? Conscious of his ever abiding presence. It's capital H. In Matthew 28, 20, the B path. The New King James says, I am with you always, not sometimes, even to the end of the world. God says he's with you. He's not going to leave you. If God is with you, do you have any reason to panic? No. Romans 8 verse 31. What shall we say then to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? If God is for you, who can be? Say nobody can be against me. Say it one more time. John 14, 16 and 17. And I pray and I'll pray the Father and shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. He's not going to leave you. He, he will be with you what? Forever. Even the spirit of truth, verse 17, we the world cannot receive because he seeth him not. They are knoweth him. But you know him. For he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. He's with you and what? So, he's ever with you 24-7. That should give you confidence. Should give you what? Yeah, what Paul said in 2 Timothy 4, 7, 17. Paul speaking in 2 Timothy 4, 17. Notwithstanding, the Lord stood with me and strengthened me. Do you see where his courage came from? He said, no, said the Lord, what? Paul speaking, stood with me and strengthened me. That by me, the preaching might be fully known. And that all the Gentiles might hear. And I was delivered out of the, hand, out of the mouth of the lion. He said, the reason I'm not panicking is because God is with me. Shout hallelujah. Do I walk to the valley of the shadow of death? I fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Psalm 23 verse 4. Even though I walk to the valley of the shadow of death, I am courageous because God is what? With me. It's right here. Are you getting what I'm talking about? Never panic, no matter the challenge. You walk through the areas where evil is happening, it will not come near you. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Greater is he that is in me than every devil that is in the world. So I have the greater one. First John 4 4. In Joshua 1 5. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee, no what? No matter where you are, know that God is always with you. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. God with you is the greatest companion you will ever need to always win. God is with me. That should give me 
To give me what? I should be courageous. Then number five, remind yourself of scriptural and contemporary testimonies. Remind yourself of what? Scriptural and contemporary testimonies. God has not changed. Malachi 3.6. If he did it before, he would do it again. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and forever. Hebrews 13 verse 18. Eight. We have heard testimonies. We heard Shira Mishra Abednego. So that can give you what? Confidence. Is that true, sir? Now, my grandmother, without even at this level of Christianity, the village where she came from, they used to have a day they call an evil day. They said nobody goes to fishing and come back that day. So that particular day, nobody goes to fishing. It's an history in that part of the world. She was an orthodox Anglican, but I met her reading Igbo Bible because there was no Bible in their language then. So she used to use Igbo, Igbo Bible before they produced the Bible of their language. She would read. Then she said, they said, one day she said, she saw Daniel, dear something that was contrary. She had better go. She was not talking to us as children. So she said she would go to fishing that day. Let us see whether she will not come back. So the whole community waited at the water side to see whether she would come back. They, they believed that if you go to fishing that day, you will never come back. So she went to fishing and returned back. That was how that evil day was broken. The devil did not even appear to stop her. She didn't have the faith we have now. She just said, she damaged her bendigo. They dared. So let her go to fishing and see where that devil will make her to not to return home. She came back. A woman. You, you know Bible now more than that time. Small thing. Is she, is she, one lion is uh, on the road. Oh. They said if you go, no market. Go first now. Go first. They said those who go to the market, they don't even sell. Go to the market. If others don't sell, are you not the covenant child? I don't know if I made the market. This is him, but nothing is, nobody's buying anything. Sell first. Sell first. December, December, nothing is working. If I buy market now, are you sure what I will sell? First buy now before you talk of what you sell. You've not bought, you are thinking of why you sell. <laughs> you have not registered for school, you are thinking of why you do lectures. First register first now, register first. Register <laughs> first. You're busy, busy yourself whether lecturer will teach you or not. First register. Look, there's nothing in this world, nothing in this world that God will tell you without calling you can achieve. Nothing. Nothing. Are you hearing me now? This church you are seeing, what brother says what? College. Do you know the things that people were threatened left and right? <laughs> threatened left and gang up left and right. Someday they will tell us that if you if you make noise here again, <laughs> they will not make noise more. <laughs> One day they came to me, they said, Listen, this church is disturbing. I said, One of the ones in Victoria Street in Port Harcourt, some of you were outside, but you will know. They used to put speaker and make noise. I said, those, those people make noise early morning. Are they not disturbing? Have you stopped them? You want to stop us? If you dare it, they say, leave this one. They like trouble. <laughs> and it's with courage, oh. It's with what? They've come with armed men to bring down the headquarters of salvation missions. I came out with courage. I said, listen, if you bring the first block down and you don't die, the man looked at me. He said, is that how church will pray? As well be with God. Say courage. courage. Say courage. courage. I have been face to face with armed men. Face to face. Early morning that time church was just starting. We used to pray. So we came out to pray. And these men were armed to teeth. Myself, Pastor Charles, and few of us came out to pray at the junction. When I came out to the junction, I was wearing a house coat. They jumped down from their car and cocked the gun. Pointed the gun at me. All I did was I did le brodia kosia conchanto bradia kata. They said, Nadem, make you go. <laughs> Say courage. courage. I saw that thing as a walking stick. The, the way you see things, it determines how it behaves. I'll tell you two obstacles for this service obstacles to living a courageous life, obstacles to living a worth. Shout hallelujah. I've told you as the certificate of occupancy was signed on the 31st. Have you heard that story before? Glory of this church. If God must intervene in your case, you must be courageous. I see God intervene. Yeah. Obstacles to living a courageous life. 
the number one obstacle is fear. Is what? Fear. Fear is false evidence appearing real. That's the meaning of fear. Fear of the unknown, fear of failure, fear of disappointment. No. No. In Philippians chapter 1 verse 28, it said, don't be terrified and, and in nothing terrified by your adversaries. Which to them and evidence to, talking of perdition, but to you of salvation and that of God. Until you are terrified, you can never be terrorized. He said, nothing should terrify you. Nothing should shake your heart. So I hear. So I refuse to fear. Please don't allow yourself to be buried in the grave of fear. For God has not given not the spirit of fear, but of power of love and of a sound mind. 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 7. I caused the spirit of fear in someone's life in the name of Jesus. People are afraid to do things. Anything you are afraid of has already dominated you. Have enough. Listen, God is too big to be harassed by that small project of yours. I mean, God will tell you to start an international business and you are still struggling with a small market table. No, when God speaks, He speaks according to His size. Are you getting me? Without courage, we wouldn't have left canopy. Highest would have been till now. It's one canopy in plot 35. It took courage. Oh. God told us, move, we move. Courage. At every point, courage. Everybody, what? Even the cathedral took courage. Took what? Took courage. Without courage, where will you start from? One is God will tell you, two is your own. You have what? Courage. Are you getting me now? Glory reign is courage. Glory reign is what? You'll be calculating. Where, where, where will we start from? Okay, if I preach, now, am I sure they will hear me outside for that God? No. No. Many analyses will come to your head to paralyze your destiny. Stop analyzing them. Because Satan's job is to give you too many voices. Too many. Who, who has done it in your family before? You now look at yourself. True. It's okay. In your community, who has done it? It's true. And I say, okay, look at your environment. Who has done it? You mean you. 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 Can't you see your face? And then you now stupidly go and look at the mirror and say, true, true, see my face. <laughs> it's trying to weaken everything inside you. He say, you. You know that even school, you are not brilliant. So now you, you are talking about establishing a big firm. <laughs> it wants to kill your courage. You. What have you done before you have succeeded? School, you failed. Business, you failed. Everything, you failed. Now you want to start something. Don't try it. Oh. Because you have no Bible inside you. When they ask you, say, I wanted to do business, but I don't know. I don't think I will do it again. He said, why? I don't know. The voices you heard that contradicted the word, they are battling with you. I cast those voices in the name of Jesus. Yes. Finally, number two, people's opinion. People's what? Opinion. Why pull out people's opinion? <laughs> don't walk by people's opinion. Walk by the word of God. Walk by what? Don't ever walk by people's opinion. Majority is not always correct. Many times majority is wrong. Now, for instance, heaven help those. He said, majority is said, but it's wrong. Heaven does not help those who help themselves. Heaven help those who can't help themselves. But that's a majority statement. Is it correct? No, it's wrong. That majority says something does not mean it's what? Correct. Okay, majority now believe that you can't survive in this country. True? True? But that's not correct. Is it correct? No. Majority opinion in most cases is wrong. John 17, 14 to 16. I have given them thy word. This is Jesus speaking. 
And the world had what? Hated them. Because they are not of this world, even as I'm not of the world. I pray not that they should, thou shouldest take them out of the world, but thou shouldest keep them from evil. 16 finally. They are not of the world, even as I'm not of the world. So God is simply saying, though you're here, don't pray like people here. Are you getting me clear? You're in the world, but don't think like the people of old, the world. Think in line with this book. It's right here. Are you getting me? Don't allow news control your mental faculty. It's right here. The report you believe is what will become your testimony. Which report will you believe? God's report? He said, arise and shine for your light is come, for instance. For behold, darkness shall cover the earth. Isaiah chapter 60, verse 2. Verse 1 to verse 2. And gross darkness the people, but the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. May his glory be revealed upon you. Amen. You and I are not permitted to suffer what they, they suffer out there. So I'll rise up with courage to shine. Say it one more time. The times we live in requires courage to be a winner. <laughs> Without courage, there's nothing that you can do. So rise with courage and you are sure to win. Are you hearing me? Do what others are afraid to do. Step out in line with the word of God. If say nobody has done it, then be the first to do it. Refuse to be afraid. This one thing, God, all the things God said to you this year, they will only be actualized with what? This is the last step. Yes, the year is ending. Everything God said to you, you shall be the head. He said, I'll crown the year with your what? And the power shall drop. So take that scripture and say, Lord, I will end this year well. And then stand on the integrity of that world. Don't allow your heart to shake. Don't panic. Don't what? Even when things look contrary, don't panic. Even the days we had no food to eat, I saw myself as a multi-billionaire. When we had no food, I saw from God's word, the small shall become a thousand. And the small nation shall become a big nation. Though that beginning be small, the greater end shall greatly increase. So I didn't bother from the days of sleeping on the floor as a pastor, from days of taking cassava. For those of you in the Western world, Powdered cassava, we call it gari in this part of the world. Soaked it. When I was eating gari, I was telling people, so I'm going to be a rich preacher. Well, the pre people used to get angry. Oh. It's college. Oh. Don't think that they won't get angry. It would talk, when I talk before, you know I'm Polish now. Before I used to talk one kind, they used to look at him with one suit. He said he's going to be rich. Like, and so they take, one day one make mockery of me. He said look at him with one coat. He was saying it to my ear, you know. You know, have, have they ever mocked you? Mocked to the point where it's many for them to call your name. <laughs> Are you getting what I'm saying now? Until you get to that point, men of college don't talk based on what is happening and they talk on what they are seeing from scriptures. When you work in college, you don't talk like other men. You, even your language will show whether you're courageous or you're fearful. When you want to know a person who is fearful, every day talk, they say, I don't know. I don't know. In our church, they say we should not talk like that. But come. Come. You know, Papa is on pulpit. His mouth is making prim, 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 prim. He does not go to market, so he doesn't know what is happening. You know, prim, 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 prim. He will just be talking. You know, he holds a microphone, so his mouth can be talking anyhow. But you, come. All this one is saying, don't say it like that, oh. If you say like that, nobody will help you. That is the day your life has ended. Don't talk like that. Don't say, I can't be poor. Forget him. See the members of their church and I see plenty of people. I ain't going to take poor. <laughs> <laughs> is it the wrong part? You, don't say like that. Oh. When you see people like that, don't say, I can't be poor. Just say, God help us. Oh. Talk like that. <laughs> Correct. Look, I have, I'm talking very gentle now. I used to be very raw. Very raw. With big coat. Any day they show you my suit, you see, I used to wear 56. Just imagine how big I am now. And then that time, it's 56. I was already overall as coat. 
56. I'm wearing 52 now. I used to wear 56. Do you understand that kind of thing? This shoulder, I'm here. Then the shoulder will be here. And I just come and say, listen. Nothing can make me poor. I'm one of the wealthiest with 56 coat. <laughs> you are not understanding what I'm talking about. But I was so courageous and I was so bold. I said, listen, I'm not going to be a poor preacher. So if I'm saying it now, they say, I don't get money and I make it dead to prove that this thing is real. I said, listen, I will never beg from any member. Never beg from any of you. Some of you are looking at me. So you should get angry. I ain't going to talk like that. But they are back again. Look, talk like a lion. Stop talking like a dog. Dog will make no. Oh, you're attacking a dog attack. That's what they call it bingo. Lion will roar. Everybody will stay clear and say he's in charge here. Courageous people will roar. You will say, God, I want to be like you. Even at dead, he was courageous. He was what? First, I said, look, I will destroy this temple in three days. I will build it up. He said, courage. He said, dead, you have no power over me. Your communion today will be, Lord, as I partake of your flesh and blood. Let your nature begin to flow in me. Let me carry the express nature of you. That nothing makes me to be afraid. Are you hearing me? That fear will permanently after today, all that you have said to me must be accomplished. Rise to your faith. Shout a better amen. amen. Shout a loud amen. amen. Shout, Lord, baptize me with the spirit of what? Courage. Lord, whatever makes me to be weak must come to an end today. I receive fresh baptism. Fresh baptism. With the spirit of courage and boldness. God has not given me the spirit of fear, but the power of love and of a sound mind. I receive a new spirit to walk in the order of of what I've heard. Go ahead and pray that prayer in the name of Jesus. Go ahead and talk to God in the name of Jesus. Say pray ke tu brali alo jintalo bragadia kosa kotale. E kroza zele bregedia kotale bregedia kata. Ze koka krakotale bregedi krato janto bradia kotale bregedia. A brozi zalo bregedia kotale bregedia kashanta bragadia. Bresuze li krato bragati ako sakuta. Le kosaka tabaga le bragatu karo brege. And Jesus might him. The Holy Ghost uses pictures to speak to me. He has a way using illustration. Moses come this way. Stand here, pass over. Bring any valuable thing in your hand. Stand here. This is our courage. This is simple courage. Stand here. No, stand somewhere at the back. Come here. No, stand here. Now, this is what courage is. The Holy Ghost just said, hold the iPad. Now, iPad is his possession. iPad is what? Come. Just come closer. Go and take possession of what belongs to you in the name of Jesus. I have prayed for him. I prayed for him. Now, open your eyes. Open your eyes. That is your position. What are you expected to do? No. Just go. I will demonstrate. He's moving now. His courage. This courage. This I can't do for him. Do you understand? This step he took is what? That's all you need to do. Yes, words have been spoken. Prophets have been declared. But God will not move you from here to there. You are the one who takes step to there. That is what courage is. God has spoken. God has declared, but the step has to be taken by him. That's what courage is. He said, whatever wants to kill that in me, I curse it. I receive grace to take the giant steps I've been afraid to take. Go ahead and pray that prayer in the name of Jesus. I curse everything that wants to stop me from taking giant steps. I receive grace to take those steps in the name of Jesus. Oh, put your mind and pray for yourself. I receive.
receive grace to take those giant steps. Every fear must die this moment. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, I cause fear in your life in the name of Jesus. Amen. The Holy Spirit himself empower you Amen. to take giant steps Amen. before this year is over. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now, the prophetic with David Ibiomi. Now that you are baptized with courage, Go and conquer. Amen. Go and win. Amen. Go and prosper. Amen. Go and end the year well. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. To everyone that is called sick. I pronounce you healed in the name of Jesus. Amen. No evil shall be fallen your us. As you go, any agent of the devil planning to attack anyone is cause the name of Jesus. Amen. The blood of Jesus seal over your lives in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. The greatest miracle is that the righteous are as bold as lion. You cannot belong to the righteous company until you've accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Wherever you are in any part of the world, including here where we're transmitting from, if you have not met with Jesus. Maybe you met with him, but you somehow backslided, rededicated your life. Said, if any man be in Christ, not if any man be in church. You can be in church and not be in Christ. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Pray this prayer after me. Wherever you are, say after me, Lord Jesus, come into my life. I accept you as my personal Lord and Savior. I believe in my heart that you died and rose from there to save me. Now with my mouth, I declare you the Lord over my life. Thank you, Father, for saving me. In Jesus' name. If this message blessed your life, or you need someone to pray with you, feel free to call us on plus 234-811-470-9570 or plus 234 We are here to listen and support you. This message was brought to you by Salvation Ministries.